and not as much thought into the team comp overall as we would think, but it did work out very well for them. And Mantor Cloud is one of their main playmakers. He's going to hope to make some plays in this game as uh, Curse have just found their own little bit of composition. The Ash Zyra coming back out. They ran it just yesterday, I want to say, and uh, almost worked out for him in that game against TSM. They're bringing it back here against Vulcan and saying, all right, well, maybe second tries the charm. Yep, these are, I mean, these are all champions that Cloud9 would run. So Curse have been using uh, pretty much aligning their values with the um, the values of the number one team here, which is not a bad idea. No. And they all, more importantly, they all have practice on these champions. These are not new champions for them. So it's, it's a very easy transition here for Curse. And I like um, this adaptation. Mm -hmm. The only thing is we'll see if they actually execute it the same way because Cloud9 has a very specific style that they run. See what Curse can do with this one then, because the, uh, the engage potential is definitely nice. The last couple picks come out for Vulcan and Isaac Smithy back on to Evelyn. And the Malphite coming in for Psycho Sid. So a lot of engage power here for the Vulcan lineup. I love the Malphite pick against Ash because he can get right to her. She has no, the only way she could get out of that is if she flashes an unstoppable force, which is hard to do in the first place. And then attack speed reductions on Ash are very, very efficient um, because her end game crit damage, uh, she gets bonuses for her crit. And if you can reduce mm -hmm. attack damage, she can't get those off. Reduces everything so much. And now Curse gets to make their final choice because, as you mentioned, Jace can be run by Voidboy or by Nijaki. So they could have picked a mid laner or a top laner with his last grab right here, assuming the Zyra is support. And right now they're looking at Rumble. I want to make sure they actually decide what they want to go for. Heck, I mean, top lane Nass is even something we've seen before. If it is Jungle of Moon, less likely. <laughs> but a, uh, a theoretic possibility. We go the last couple of seconds, and it is going to be Edward locking in the Rumble for the team. So. A lot of long-range tools here for Curse. And it looks like Curse want to run their comp similar to Cloud9. They're putting so much emphasis on this potential to fight over the early and mid-game dragons. So I had to keep track of those because if Curse run this comp and don't get those fights, mm -hmm. then they will lose out in the uh, in the end of game here. If Vulcan, they're going with the strategy of picking people off. Yeah. They're going to try and separate members of Curse and use that Evelyn to flank in from the side and use Ari's mobility to catch people and then burst them down from 100%. We'll probably see Mandatory Cloud go with that um, Deathfire Grasp build that's True. so effective in just 100%ing people. And of course, as we saw in the Dig and Toss vs. TSM game, Dig actually managed to sneak in the first Dragon or so and prevented that, that Nasus, the team fight sort of control around Dragon area. So if Curse can, can play it right, Again, they want to take those dragon fights. If uh, Vulcan play it right, though, they actually circumvent that entire situation. And as you said, they're going to go for picks right here. This is a battle that Curse really needs to win right here. They're in a tie for sixth. If they lose, they drop down to seventh place. They actually drop down um, as far as Curse, uh, sorry, as far as Coast is going to be, which is a rough spot. They don't want to be there. They don't want to be so far down. Uh, Vulcan, though, especially with TSM just losing that last game. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I like blanked randomly. They, they've really had a boost uh, to their comments because they had a shaky week last week. Yeah. And people started actually questioning them again uh, because they had just come into the spotlight. And now they've just come back and they've been much more solid. And they've been, they, they've really had their confidence just uh, brought back up, I think, for this week. So they're feeling pretty good. There we go, guys. So the playoff race in for these battles, in for these teams. Vulcan on the blue side, spawning in the bottom left. Bloodwater already choosing to uh, skill up that Q and charge his power cords. Pretty good choice right there. And of course, Curse in the top right in red. You've got that Ash Zyra duel, and it's been so popular the second half of this split in the LCS, at least in North America. No one else really pulling that one in for themselves. And adding a lot of damage output and team fight control. That seems to be a, uh, a good strategy here for Curse. And we're seeing Curse actually have a kind of a defensive setup, whereas Vulcan, kind of an early aggressive setup. Vorbo's going to see this one, but he has to be careful here and not stay in range long enough for Mandatory Cloud to check that bush. Because Mandatory Cloud has not leveled up an ability yet, and he could quickly level up Charm if they found someone one versus four. Yeah. It's definitely worth a first blood to start out with a, a different level one spell than you would optimally want for your yeah. lane. For the lane. So both teams actually pushing in to get some wards down, kind of aggressing the opposing blue buffs. Edward had put one down in the brush around blue. Meanwhile, Vulcan putting theirs in. 
kind of down towards the cliff. It spots part of river, actually, which is kind of interesting. So we can see some of the gank paths. I also like that Curse has an early vision ward uh, down on kind of the side in front of their own lizard buff. It'll spot if Smithy wants to go in there. Voivoy actually standing on top of a ward. Gets rocket jump. The flash exhaust comes in. Here comes a flash charm. They find it. The ignite is on. Do they have the damage? No flash up for Voivoy's shield. The flash Q. First blood to Psycho Sid. Two, three, three flashes, two ignites, one exhaust, one first blood. <laughs> Worth and it. MasterCard accepted everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Priceless indeed. So here we go, guys. Kerr is going to steal away the blue buff, but of course, Vulcan with complete control of the opposing one. I'm actually surprised that Smithy's not going for it right now. Saint burns his smite on this blue buff and goes to run back around the map. We have Mancloud fighting Jackie in the mid lane. Smithy's just grabbing his red, actually burns his smite for it. He's actually having a much slower time of the jungle despite the level one advantage. Yeah, and it's very hard for Evelyn to get back since she didn't start with the blue, and now she has no smite. She has to have Sona help her take away this second buff if she wants to have um, much of a chance of getting back quickly into this game. You can see they are immediately sending blood water up there. They feel safe doing this because they already got the first blood on Void Boy and blew his flash, so he's gonna not want any part of any sort of invade or any early fights. And Smithy looks completely safe right here. Wow. Make sure the pink Never mind down. then. Yeah. <laughs> just no one even wanted to stop him. So a standard two for two buff trade. Just the first blood. Really making things different here at this level one. Bloodwater, you're seeing him zone out the opposition. And Smithy says, I'm just going to farm out my jungle for now. Seems to not find a gank worthy of his time. And actually, this, I think this happened last time Smithy was on Evelyn uh, when they fought Velocity Esports. He actually farmed a lot early on on EVE. Yeah, and this is the okay early part for him is because he started out with 24 AP from runes. So he's runing for the uh, the extra power from his hate spike here early to help him clear out this jungle. That's why he didn't have the difficulty with taking down that blue. And you see Saint showing up though, being a Nasus, defending his solo laner right here in a two versus two. But Vulcan actually have left their top lane alone. Psycho said actually went for the wolf camp and partially cleared that one out, then rejoined his lane. But his turret's already down to half HP right now. This is not the easiest start here for Sid. So they sort of forced Smithy to the bottom side of the map with the uh, buff exchange right there. So it definitely delayed him in bringing the assistance up to his Malphite here. And they're already very far behind in the early turret game. Five to six, as far as solo inner minion kills are concerned, but the turret losing health is the real thing to be concerned about. Well, the water takes a harpoon to the face, and Voy, because of not being pressured and actually being defended by St. Vicious, is just holding onto this lane pretty successfully. Vulcan not really getting in on this turret, as you mentioned. So, uh, you know, there, there's just going to be Zuna trying to farm, but not getting any real global lead. Yeah, Curse are very, very happy to go with a two versus one situation when the jungler on Vulcan is Evelyn because Evelyn is such a sneaky champion. If you can keep her in that lane with Psycho Sid, forcing her to stay in vision and, and defend you, it means that you don't have to be worried about constantly having pink wards. They jump in there, of course, no flash for Bloodwater, but they go in on a Voivod who doesn't have his either. Can Zuna do enough damage? Bloodwater goes down to St. Vicious. Zuna, do you have enough damage? That brush is warded, but the shield comes out. Zuna needs the jump reset. He's gonna jump away with Wither on him. Now Saint does not have flash anymore, but red buff could just be enough. His spear fire should be coming up soon. He might get the cube, charges it, but the barrier comes out by Zuna, and Saint's gonna have to run away from this one. So again, they wanted to um, work with the flashes that were expended to get the first blood on Voiboy, Boy. but since Voiboy Boy also had burned his in defense, ends up being just a trade right there. And actually, definitely in favor of Vulcan because Zuna is still free to farm up, whereas Voiboy Boy loses out on, a, on quite a few experience points from these minions. And the push of the turret doesn't end up doing much from St. Vicious. Did some damage with the Spirit Fire there but didn't quite chunk his opponent out. And now Bloodwater is here to lend, uh, lend a healing hand uh, and keep Zuna alive. And just look at the AD carries, 35 to 40, with one kill and an assist on Zuna. So he is well on his way to getting gigantic and being that scary AD carry that Vulcan really like to have in their lineup. Yeah, Zuna's feeling pretty good about that kill, but because of the action down bottom, they haven't put any damage on the turret, and it's gonna be Curse who have the, the first turret pickup here. So it's gonna be Curse being able to rotate their AD and support down to that dragon that they want to pick up the first fight with. St. Vicious is getting jumped on a bit by Mandatory Cloud. Good damage coming out from the Ari, but use the Spirit Rush to escape. 
Realizing he's out of mana, can't do too much else there. It's kind of an odd one to use, but hey, you know, to each your own. The turret does go down. There is Cop and Edward making it happen. Zuna's going to recall back for items here. See what he picks up, because as you mentioned, Dragon might be on the table now. And Voiboy is uh, using this time wisely, trying to get to that level 6 so that they can have Equalizer for the Dragon fight. And he's doing a good job because, you know, Zuna on that Tristana is always going to be pushing the lane. Because of the explosive shot, she passively pushes it. And Voiboy doesn't want to have to overextend uh, before he does get his level 6. And it looks like actually it's interesting because they are staying around for now. Jackie showing back up to the mid lane there. So they want to wait for the rotation from mm -hmm. their AD and support until Voiboy hits 6. There's got not, it, got there's it. not a lot of point of having that dragon fight if your Rumble ulti yeah. fight doesn't have a Rumble ulti in it. <laughs> so maybe Vulcan trying to put pressure on it before that even happens. Look at it, Smithy there. They're trading the blue buff away. Cursor taking this one down. But Smithy and Bloodwater are just saying, you know what? Screw it. We'll take Dragon now. We'll circumvent the Nassau. We'll circumvent the Rumble Ultimate and go for this right here. They're coming in. Very sneaky choice here from Vulcan. They are playing Curse very well. And Bloodwater is doing is playing this Dragon very well. You can see him going in and out of melee range of the Dragon to make the Dragon waste time turning around 180 degrees so the damage output is a lot less. And that's the only reason they're actually able to take it so early, tanking it even with a Sona and an Evelyn. Beautiful stuff then. Of course, Curse are rewarded by stealing away probably both blue buffs at this point, but I gotta say, at that point, it's probably just worth it because uh, Dragon for two blues is nice unless Curse does something with the blue buffs. Unless they actually create some kind of a fight where the blue buff makes a difference. And there's St. Vision. He sweeps out the ward and goes, uh, that's what they did by not taking blue. Okay, so he, knows, he knows kind of the timer on it. He says, okay, it died at least before eight minutes, but that's why we got blue buff. So we'll see if Curse can do something with those blues or if the Dragon ends up being the better play. Yeah, we talked about the importance of this Curse team actually executing like Cloud9 and getting the chain dragons. They have missed out on the first one. And you're right, Vulcan have the timer on it. So even if Vulcan aren't able to capitalize on the second one, they'll know when Curse want to move for it. So they actually do have a good amount of information there. And Jackie, the blue buff on Oh, here we go! Down bottom lane, Zuna though, Evelyn looking for Cop. Use Cop getting low on HP, and of course the W already burned by Smithy. Couldn't get enough damage. Good flash by Cop allowed him to get Buster shotted away. Back towards his own turret and not into the lineup of Vulcan. So good reflexes there. Didn't even have to barrier. Cop only had to burn one summoner. And of course Smithy spent his time. So Curse gonna grab three of the four buffs this rotation. We'll see what they can do with him. Because they didn't kill him, they got him low enough, though, to shove him off of this turret. And it's very dangerous for Edward with no flash to stick around as well. So they are going to get an objective off of that gank, even though they weren't able to get a kill off of it. So finally, that 2 on 1 lane, the, the old 2 on 1 lane, does turn into a turret off that gank on a cop. Good job there, Bag Smithy. Doesn't get a kill, but gets a flash. But Man Cloud running into the enemy team, gets found by St. Vicious, jumps away with the Spear Rush, has the last jump right there. Boy, flashes for the slow, but there's Psycho Sid. Unstoppable Force knocks him into the air. Now getting chased away by Boy Boy. Has some MR. Saint's gonna flash over this one. Jackie coming to chase down. There's the Wither. Charm lands on the Saint, and Curse are still chasing down. Jackie has blue. Flashes in. Might just be enough here. Can he get the damage he needs? Man Cloud forced to use W. Psycho Sid's still losing health, but slows down Saint, and Curse cannot get a kill out of this one. Good escape by Vulcan. And they all burn their flashes to chase this one. Now they're actually the ones on the run. Ari looking to go back in. What they wanted to pick off Jackie, but that last shock blast landing scared them away. Okay, so nice try there by Curse. Almost got the catch they wanted. Almost every ultimate there was burned. A lot of flashes, as you mentioned. Smithy, though, because his mid laner rotated out, Smithy takes the mid lane farm, not leaving anything up to die to a turret or die to minions. He's going to get the farm for himself, power up as Evelyn. It's always a good choice as junglers. And to, speaking of powering up, the reason that um, the blue buffs was a pretty decent exchange there for Curse is that Jackie on Jace having the tier, uh, the blue buff is going to help him charge that up a lot because the cooldown on the charges have been increased and the charge amount has been decreased. So you definitely appreciate that one. And, and they'll try and get to that Muramana as quickly as possible. Every blue buff helps, Freak. 
Every blue buff does help. He's going to do whatever he can to stay up and stay powered. 85 to 80 in his head-to-head -head matchup against Mancloud, so a small lead there. But Vulcan are winning the map overall right here. 2 to 1 on kills. Arrow lands on a Bloodwater. Cop diving against knocked back by Zuna. Crescendo lands on 2. Edward going to go for the root on Azuna. Finds it. Wither comes across. Rocket jump out. Zuna's going to be safe. Burn the Crescendo. Burn the Ash Arrow. Decent exchange of ultis because the Crescendo could lock up multiple members, but the only reason that arrow even hit is because Bloodwire doesn't have boots. That part <laughs> blank arrow was very close to being dodged. So there's the gank on to Jackie Smithy trying real hard. Jackie low on HP, of course, already burned his flash. So that will be a kill picked up. Smithy getting the kill credit. Three to one now. Good gank. There's the pick composition coming to fruition. They've got the roaming Evelyn, very hard to keep track of. And then Ari can set up lane ganks like no other mid. Landed the charm, made it happen, but now Cop on the chase against Zuna. Frost shots are there. Here's St. Vicious, lands the Wither. Can he do enough damage before the turret overwhelms him? Pops his ulti, still chasing down. Flashes the roots from Edward, but the ulti comes out. Knocked into the air is Zuna. Damage still coming out. Cop finds that one. And now Bloodwater in not the best place. Barrier comes across. Almost picks up the kill. Manclad takes the turret down in mid. Voidboy surely gets Bloodwater here. Good kill pickup. Curse, hand, curse fans are so happy right now because they've seen Curse bumble these tower dives so many times on Vodib. They actually had good communication on that one and a good exchange of tower aggro. Cop had the confidence that St. Vicious was going to take it long enough to put himself deep into enemy territory and finish the job even while taking a couple hits. Very well done then, Curse with the coordination. Mancloud did trade the mid lane turret for that one and push down to the secondary. So Vulcan have a turret lead out of this one, but Kurs have equalized in terms of champions and Cop getting a champ kill, going 1-0-1, one, one, definitely going to help him keep pace with Zuna and get some real items in. But Zuna's got an early Blade of the Ruined King and he's got it in time for Dragon in 30 seconds. And that's always a dangerous item for Zuna. It's one of his favorite items because he loves, even as an AD carry, mm -hmm. just brawling with people. Yeah. He won't hesitate to go for these er early duels. So if someone's going to come uh, split push and go up against Zuna, then they have to be ready for the all-in from that Tristana. So be aware, guys. Mancloud has picked up his own blue buff. Baron, sorry, well, Baron's responding in, spawning in a minute and a half. Dragon spawning in three seconds, though, and Mancloud's going to have cooldowns and mana. He actually recalls to be healthy in time for this one, but Saint has already swept away wards at the Dragon. Voidboy is ult up at 20 seconds, Saint's up right now. Jackie's up in two seconds as well. Only Edwards has a bit of oh time no! to go. Arrow does not land though. They looked for Smithy but couldn't find it. That could be a crucial cooldown that Cursor missing. Evelyn has a speed boost that doesn't cost any mana. Her Dark Frenzy can be activated for a 40%, and that is huge. E very easily enabling him to dodge arrows. And that misfire from Cop means that they actually do not have the dragon fight power that they they built their team around having because Vulcan has so much engage. Here comes the dive in. Charm does not land. Crescendo only hits on the Void Boy. Can the team keep re engaging? Psycho Sin uh -oh. waiting on his ultimate. Who's going to go in now? Man Cloud drop low. Good flash by Cop. Gets away from Sid. Sid now overextended. He's going to drop down. Edward gets dropped by Zuna though. One for one so far. Saint in the front lines. Will Curse keep re engaging? Saint flashes in but gets dropped by the charm right there. And now Zuna's still alive in the background. Voidboy toss out some harpoons. They're going to be safe, but two for one for Vulcan. Could have been a lot worse for Curse if Cop did not flash that unstoppable yeah. force. And it was a max range of unstoppable force, but still, you got to give him props for that. And I like, I'm impressed too by Psycho Sid waiting around. It wasn't like, okay, fight started, I'm ready. It was like, Psycho Sid, he's, he's not going. Well, he's the, got, when is it? When is, oh God, now. The crescendo was a little bit of a, it made Vulcan reconsider the fight because it did only hit Rumble and it was a little bit of a uh, wasted time right there. So let's take another look at that fight, actually. And we can see the poke kind of hesitant to go in here. There's Cop with a great flash last second on Psycho Sid. But Edward, too far right now, means that they are going to be able to turn this one around and Vulcan come out with two kills. Because Saint flashing in after Ari. That's a dangerous proposition. That's, that's a Zuna special right there. It's chasing an Ari <laughs> yeah. into the brush and getting hit by <laughs> yeah. all the skill shots. He's, he's trying to learn from Vulcan. Uh, but Curse, though, they've still got a little bit of Crystal control arrows right up, here. But no equalizer. So we'll see if they want to fight for this one. They are actually forced back a little bit with this one. Looking on a bit of a surround. They've got Zuna and Smithy on the bottom side. The rest of the team over towards the left. Awkward position for Vulcan, but it's enough to force Curse out. And Zuna can shove down the bottom lane. The rest of the team goes mid. The reason that Curse didn't go for that one is because the two people 
that cop was looking at to hit with arrows were Evelyn and Tristana, which both can dodge them pretty easily. So they didn't want to take the chance right there and lose the ability to defend with a crystal arrow. So Vulcan have regrouped here, but they don't have the pink ward coverage right now. They can see Curse come in, but they don't have the wards on Baron itself. In fact, Zuna and Smithy were both spotted there by the pink ward, so Curse knows exactly what's going on right now. They're just going to push down mid. Their ultis are back, so Curse's full team fight power is here. It's really going to be about who fires first with their long range engage, because Vulcan have a great answer in the Unstoppable Force and the Crescendo. But Cop definitely does have the range advantage. And if he's able to land his Crystal Arrow first, then that target is definitely in danger of just getting bursted 100% before Vulcan can answer. So it's up to Psycho Sid and Bloodwater to protect whoever is the unfortunate recipient of that Crystal Arrow. Let's see if they can do it then, because Curse definitely can participate with all their long range abilities of catching whoever gets arrowed and making them die real fast. Right now, Curse are looking at Vulcan doing Dragon, and they just cannot stop them. Vulcan managing to outmaneuver and take it down without much answer. Psycho uh -oh. Sid gets stunned, and here comes the re-engage. Charm on the Void. Down below half HP is Rumble, pushing down Psycho Sid, pushing down Mancloud. Psycho Force to flash away. Smithy looking for the re-engage. Puts the ulti down. Flash crescendo onto three. Edward falls down, and it's going to be a train on a Bloodwater. Sight now in the middle of the enemy team, taking damage. Zuna chases. That's a two-kill pickup here for Vulcan on the back of Dragon as well. Vulcan in control. So they hit an arrow, but it was on the Malphite. The full tank Malphite. And they had mm -hmm. to burn a lot trying to bring him down. He didn't even end up getting below 50% with all of that. Whereas Void Boy, trying to chase and get the damage done, lost everything. So let's take a look at that game, that fight again real quick, watching Psycho Sid tank all through it. All right, so the Harrow. There we go. This is a good start right here because Vulcan are split. Remember, the three other members are down below the dragon at this point. So it takes them this long to rejoin. But now, the secondary engage of Bloodwater's Crescendo locking up Curse long enough for them to come out with another double kill. Beautiful stuff by those guys and great team fight coordination. That was the one thing or one of the things that Saint said was so good about these guys is, look, we can take them out early game, but Vulcan's team fight coordination and their mid to late game decision making is so good. There is a team fight coordination right there. Saint said it seems to be pretty true right here. And Vulcan now just reaping the rewards. Dragons have been theirs. They've got a uh, equal turret kills, but they've got champion kills and they've got minion kills. They're pretty much winning down the line. Aside from Edward out CSing Bloodwater, minion kill lead for every member of Team Vulcan. Well, it was really just reactive play from Vulcan. I mean, Psycho Sid definitely did get caught in a bad spot, and Vulcan were really just trying to rush to the aid of their of their tank who was picked off. And since they have such great AOE follow up, Curse, whenever you're chasing someone, pretty much your whole team follows the same route because you want to take the shortest uh, shortest distance mm -hmm. to try and uh, catch that person. So that automatically makes Curse group up for that and. Sus makes them susceptible to those AOE counter engages. So beautiful stuff then by Vulcan to just keep their comp in mind, keeping their champions around and making sure they can get those counter engages going because they've worked so far. They've built a 4,000 gold lead, making it happen. Curse though regrouping. They've got all five mid. Void's actually sitting in the back. He's in fog of war right now. Hoping maybe he can survive, uh, surprise someone. They catch on Azuna. There's the engage. Look at the damage output. Zuna below half, but Crescendo comes back across. But that might just be enough for Curse to make their way in. Mancloud is also low. The minions are going down. Will Curse stay for this one? Mancloud has no HP right now. Curse are probably going to say because they know that they forced off Mancloud and Zuna, which are the two giant damage dealers of Vulcan, and no kill, but they get a lot of damage onto this turret. It actually makes Smithy and Psycho Sid reconsider their flanking attempt. Yeah, I feel like flanking a 3v5 is not the strongest flank. I feel like it's not going to work for you. It's so. kind of like setting up a bush gank when you only have two members and the whole team's going to walk in. It's I've a done good, that. It's a good trap delay. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the firepower to back that one up. So and they like blind bubble you and you just lose the game. That's when you abort the mission. Good job there by Psycho Sid and Smithy. Now, let me just talk about the beginning of that fight. It was set up because uh, Smithy was looking for a gank up top. They had Psycho Sid waiting in lane, just thinking that Void Boy would return up the to top to one versus one him. And Smithy was just waiting up there in the bush. That was all brought about by Boy Boy waiting so far back in Fog of War, like you said, so they couldn't see him. 
really good stuff. And the mind games in by Curse, thinking, ah, they're waiting for Voy. Uh-uh, uh-uh, Voy's actually waiting for us, so we're gonna get you guys. <laughs> so good pick right there. The poke landing and the long-range tools. Like, we don't normally see Jace a lot with these sort of long-range engage comps, but it's if we stun you, we'll land Shock Blast, we'll land Equalize, your health bar goes away. And it actually worked out quite nicely here for this Curse lineup, as long as our cooldowns are available. Arrow back up in 10, Equalizer back up in 10 as well. They can go for round two pretty soon. Cop is still taking up farm pretty nicely. He's got Infinity Edge. He's building towards his next build. So uh, Cop, by his own right, will be able to carry pretty nicely. Yeah, and it definitely shows that you have to always be cognizant of showing yourself on the map. The, the amount of information that you are giving the enemy is just as important as the amount of information you're able to take from your mini-map. Good stuff then. The Fog of War playing on Curse's side right now. And, and it's always fun to see the teams that actually manipulate map vision the best because it's such a cool way to win a game and a way to make things happen. But of course, Vulcan, having already taken down that secondary middle turret, are looking to put some pressure really deep into Curse territory. And it's allowing them a lot of ward coverage. They've got a ward right here on the corpse of that turret. Edward didn't see that ward down. They've got another ward here in the lizard side jungle. Vulcan can see a lot of this top left side of the map as they pinch this outer turret. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And that is the reason they're putting so much emphasis on those wards is because of their uh, high pick potential composition. Cop goes for another arrow on Evelyn, but it is, again, easily dodged by Smithy just activating his Dark Frenzy. I think Boy Boy equalized the wrong direction. He killed his own minion wave instead of the opposing minion wave there and didn't quite save the turret. So unfortunately, Curse Luckily, need to wait. no friendly fire. No friendly fire. The minion wave is going to go down anyway to uh, to Vulcan. But they're waiting on cooldowns anyway. The Ash Arrow was down. They don't actually quite kill the turret right there. The last shots from the cannon minion cannot drop it down. So Curse don't get the middle turret from that push. But they were afraid of Evelyn. They're forced to run away from this one. And Vulcan's still in control. Dragon is coming up. But Curse are without two of their ultimates for this dragon fight. Boy Boy's heading down, you're right. He doesn't have his equalizer, which is the most important part. So it would have to be a bluff. And Vulcan are calling the bluff and then just gonna rush down the dragon. They're pushing hard. The poke lands on Azuna Man Cloud, trying to zone out Curse. And there we go. Blue team is slaying Dragon. That is Vulcan. Five and a half thousand gold in the lead. Does Man Cloud go in onto Saint? They see him walking through the minion wave. Bloodwater has Flash of Crescendo, but they don't want to waste cooldowns on the tank. They let Curse walk away and say, we'll save these for the next one. Curse got, with his mini wave could take the middle They have turret. all five members down there, so they don't have any presence in the mid lane or the top lane here. And Cop is going to take that opportunity to get that one last hit that was uh, starving them of that of basically a thousand gold. Yeah, Sandra decided they were bad boys. They had no presence in the mid lane, so Cop got to take the turret down. That's your punishment instead of Cole. It's a dead turret. Smithy gonna just sweep out the mid lane. Once again, these guys trying to play the vision game and the, the minion control game so they don't get surprised by Ash so they don't get caught out in the darkness from the shock blast and whatnot. Cop might be wearing the double slow build here. He's gonna be getting the red buff, so uh, I don't think I wanna get chased down by Cop because I will not be able to run away from him. Well, you don't want to get chased down by the whole cursed team because whenever, wherever they move, they're gonna want to stay together. Vulcan are gonna thrive on side picks and, and the flanking maneuvers. So it's really up to Curse to sort of move as a convoy and uh, and show that unity that they're so famous for. So here we go, then teamwork for Curse. Can they find the next one? Seven to five. They've done pretty well in team fights. They've been close. <clears throat> they're just unfortunately losing on a couple of things like Dragon Control. They've kept turrets equal. They've kept kills close. Just their lanes have been ever so slightly rough, getting minion kill deficits. Actually, take that back. They've closed that gap pretty successfully here. Magma actually ulting away. Edward, well, that Edward is a good, flash for it. a good uh, sign for Curse right now. Yeah. So they can actually take advantage of this one. Taking away the mobility of Ari basically breaks her kit. Yeah. While that's down, she's extremely vulnerable. Good thing for Mantor Cloud. He's got blue buff. Max cooldown reduction. A lot of CDR on that guy. Not going to be too worried about this one. Getting his mana back as well. And they keep going for the wave clear game. And of course, Psycho Sid's imposing presence on Malphite actually face tanks a Shock Blast and doesn't lose his passive for it. So doing less than 10% of his health there and still getting ready. The arrow comes by. Oh! Good flash by Mancloud. Of course, couldn't ult for it. 
Will they re-engage on a Saint? He has been slowed down. The power core from Bloodwater making it happen too. Smithy diving for it as well. Of course, Zuna gets the kill onto Edward on the side of the map and might just push on forward. Smithy, there's the jump in, catches Cobb despite the flash, and Mancloud gets that kill. Still no Spirit Rush, but Smithy still chasing on down, gets withered, has to get away from this one. Great counter engage there from Vulcan. Because they have not only the pick potential, but also the AOE CC of the Unstoppable Force and the Crescendo, they're able to pull that one out. Let's take another look right here as they do Baron. We can see how Edward got caught out. And this is the all-in from Zuna that I talked about earlier. This is why he loves Tristana so much, because he can take those opportunities mm -hmm. to catch you off guard. You don't expect an AD carry to rocket jump at you and just use everything to go offensive. And one of the things I liked as well was how much damage he knew he had. He used Buster Shot to secure the kill. And whenever you Buster Shot to secure a kill, they're no longer in range of you. Yeah. So you got to make sure you do enough damage before that it, thing lands. It's the same thing as a Lee Sin kick. If you're, if yeah. you're with one of those uh, newer Lee Sins that can't quite judge the damage, and you get a little frustrated as they kick away mm -hmm. uh, um, kills. But Tristana, she has the added benefit of both Zuna at that time had red buff, plus if you apply the explosive shot, there's a little bit of leeway there. They're still burning as they're flying away, so if you don't quite get them, you do have an extra extra bleed damage on them. Good job then by Zuna getting the assassination, preventing Edward from using his area of effects to really make anything happen in that team fight. And you saw it go so well for Vulcan. So now, Vulcan wearing the purple buff, wearing the Baron. They're up 7,000 right here and looking for the next move. At this point, I feel like they are pick based, but they've got good they've got good initiation. They've got the Malphite, the Evelyn. They've got the follow up as well. They might just be looking to close stuff out now. In interviews with Vulcan, they said, yeah, we don't mind taking it really slowly as long as we win in the end. We think we did it well. But I always think back to the one game against Cloud9 where they played it too slow and got caught out. I want to see how Vulcan does this. So another thing that we can talk about on Vulcan is Mancloud so focused on bursting down whoever they pick off that he now has two Deathfire Grass, which won't actually help him very much. <laughs> Still maybe, 120 if he, ability power. Maybe if he misses the key, he now has two options. He can hit five and six. Yeah. Five or six, and he'll still get one of them off. It's useful. Well, good luck, man, Cloud. I think you got this one. Maybe he had a bad experience with fat fingering the wrong keys. <laughs> Actually, can you hover over? Is the, is the CDR unique passive or just a stat? All right, so he does technically. Everything but the active does stack. So it is 10 it's CDR still, and 120 it's AP. It's not an effic efficient buy. I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but at least it still works together a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. All you right. don't want to save him from this one. Uh, we'll, no, we'll no I believe. I believe. They are, though. You were talking about how Vulcan stalling this game out. What they're doing with stalling, and if they don't finish it, is they're giving more opportunities for hit crystal arrows. The reason that Vulcan are winning right now is because Curse have been expecting all of these Crystal Arrows to hit their targets, but Vulcan have done such a good job of dodging them that Curse have overcommitted because they expected the result of the Crystal Arrow hit and the stun target. That That's really the reason why Edward was out of position, because they were expecting that to land, and because of the dodge from Mandatory Cloud, that opened up the counter engage. So the more time that you give, the more shots that Cop can take, and the opportunity for one of those to actually land and go in Curse's favor. So in the meantime, Vulcan are trying to strangle the map, though. They say, yeah, you might get some arrows, but we'll get your secondary turrets. They've got all six of those uh, front two rows now. They've stolen away the blue buff. Vulcan are taking about as much of the map as they can. Now, their own buffs and Dragon are up. If they want to play the secure game, they can always take those out as they kind of steal away the jungle. And they might just keep playing that game of just We'll get more gold than you, we'll get more gold than you. At some point, we'll find you again. And you, you can buy your win in League of Legends here with this comp for, for Vulcan. The money, eventually, is going to get so big that Psycho Sid has enough armor that they can just dive turrets with Reckless Abandon. Because if he goes in first, which is what you want anyway with your Malphite, and he's got 400 armor, then he's not even going to feel the turret scratching his back there. So it, it's fine for Vulcan to basically just grab up every source of money that's on the map because they can funnel that into um, the power spike that they want where, they, where they're going to go for the actual dive and just obliterate Curse. It's actually interesting looking at what they've done with their gold as well. Smithy picked up a Quicksilver Sash in case he gets arrowed. He can actually break out of that himself. 
Of course, Man Cloud. Uh, unfortunately, I was wrong about this one. Didn't want the Deathfire Grasp. Did go Death Cap for this one. So, not ability power. But Mikhail's Crucible as well for Bloodwater. They've actually built around the arrows and said, all right, well, if you catch us, we'll still get away from it. That's, that's the adaptation that I love the most, is that now, as long as Bloodwater does his job and he doesn't get hit by the arrow, he'll be able to get whoever does get hit out of the situation. It's really, really smart. It's a rarely bought item, mm -hmm. but it's nice because we've seen so many teams pick up Ash. It's interesting we haven't had uh, more, more Mikhail's Crucibles in those games. And here's Curse actually making, looking to make their move. They've sent all five members mid lane while Mancloud is pushing the bottom lane. That's forced Mancloud and Smithy to show back up with the Vulcan lineup and play defense here and say, look, we're not letting you get this really crazy push into our base. You think back to when a Curse's wins over CLG, where CLG just didn't react to Curse running down the lane, and they lost the game for doing that. Vulcan not wanting to make that mistake themselves. Mancloud plenty of ability power, sweeping out the minions, wanting to push in and keep putting pressure on the Curse base. And they're just oh, trying to get more money. Six. They split, though. There's an arrow hit. Has to flash away. St. Vicious taking a little bit of damage. Zuna kiting backwards as well. Will he look to re-engage? Boy Boy in the front knocks up two. Crescendo follows up right there. Boy goes down. Zuna pops the ulti. Psycho Sid falls down. One for one so far. Here comes Mancloud from the side. Will they find the kills? Edward gonna go down. Cop drop low, but fighting Mancloud off. Can he do the damage? No, he cannot. And St. Vich is also going to go down. Huge fight there for Vulcan. A five for one. Three versus five initially in that team fight and Vulcan are the ones who pick up the first kill just because of how Cy tanky Psycho Sid had gotten. I was talking about him trying to ramp up for the tower dives, but if they get engaged upon and they're able to kite long enough, then it enables that endgame Tristana with their Infinity Edge plus Blade of the Ruin King combo to just do so much more damage than Curse can even put out. And there's still 10 seconds for Vulcan if they want to push in for much more. Turret's actually on Zuna right now, which is a bit of a risk, but they've now got their minion wave. This turret should be Vulcan's. Looks like they want to back out after the turret goes down. No, they stay for the inhibitor. The Boy Boy's back. The rest of Curse are reviving. There's a little bit of a scare here if they can get good crowd control. Mancloud gets rooted up in place. Zuna takes some damage. Edward's ulti goes off. Does not find a knockup, though. Mancloud comes back in, looks for a bit of damage. St. Vicious. Not going to land much. Vulcan's going to get out. It's going to be actually dangerous for uh, Curse to chase this one. We have Equalizer coming up in another 10 seconds, but they still are, are trailing behind here with the rest of their team. And there's the arrow. It does hit Smithy. He actually went into it and then QSS it. He said, I don't want Sid to get hit because the Mikhail's is on cooldown. Sid doesn't have this item. He juked in, burned his cooldown, let his team yeah. get out. We've seen all game long him use his Dark Frenzy to dodge the arrows. He actually popped it there to take the arrow. Very, very nice move by Smithy. But Curse, though, are using this to try to engage on for Baron. The knockup comes across, though. Ever likely to fall down. Cop low HP as well. But the engage is now on to Zuna. Zuna down low on HP, but Jackie just overextended. Falls down. Cop still alive. But Smithy wants blood. Finds the kill. Makes a Widow out of Ash right there. Actually, a Widow out of Trindomir, I should say. And Smithy now going to dive on forward. Looking for Void. Dodges the slows. But, of course, that's a 4 for 0 fight. Smithy is bold. In. He wants this Boy Boy kill. And he's going to chase him to the ends of the earth. But that means Vulcan, not only do they have two inhibitors down, but they've got a five versus one to end this game right now. Yeah. And they're actually, true to Vulcan style, going to stop at this turret and use a little bit more time. A little bit more global gold raises their GPM stats. <laughs> and here comes back out in. Looking for KDA maybe a little bit. Edward is back, though, as well. This is a bit close. Ten seconds till the revives. They go for the last turret right here. A little bit of damage coming across. Plants are up for Edward. Five seconds to the revive. The push now in for the Nexus. It's going to probably be enough for Vulcan. Focusing down. That's going to be the game. Vulcan taking out Curse in style. Congratulations to Vulcan. And they really deserve that one. I love the, the calls from Brother.